So as you may know, I've been very busy refactoring for the last several months. And the main reason for the refactor was, so the guy who was helping me turn it into a plugin um, kept telling me that it couldn't be used in game. Like, it wasn't going to be fast enough. And so he structured everything to be dependent on the, like, editor plugin and the node structure. And so it was just not optimized to run in game, obviously. And so that's why he had to leave um, the project. But so I refactored all of the uh, functionality into resources that are separate from the actual like GUI node structure. And so now it's like three to five times faster to generate the humans. So I'm pretty confident that's, that'll be good enough in game. Um, and I also made the download size about 25% smaller. So I'm very happy with the refactor and I'll be releasing Humanizer version two um, directly after this video. So one feature that I added is I set the body as a body part. And so there's proxies that you can download um, from MPFB2, like the skeleton. And there's, the, there's others that I do plan to add. Um, you can also set the body to none. So if you wanted to just have like the um, enchanted armor, what is it called? Animated armor, you know? And, um, or like if you want to use an armor stand or something, but keep the shape. You can also go to the makehumancommunity.org slash proxies.html and you can see that there are quite a few proxies here that you can check out. Um, so the skeleton is the Colverita um, from Kala Kalamidatis. So thank you very much. Um, it is CCO. Then I went to the um, Make Human, the MPFP2 asset pack download page, which um, there's the system hair materials 01, which is CCO. So I came and downloaded the light gray versions of the hair. And so there were like five here, I think. So I've added the platinum. And then if you apply the color, you can see that it's uh, much closer to the selected color. But there's less variation in it, so it looks less natural. So um, that's kind of up to you. And I've added it for the braid, which is a dark brown by default, um, and a couple of the other ones. So another very important issue that I fixed was the export uh, with the default settings is now working. So you can just, using your profile, you'll have to download those. Um, but as long as you set the main scene, so I have this set to the humanizer stress test in the scenes slash tests folder. Uh, do not set the main scene to the authoring because that is just for the editor. This will not run. Um, but now you can see, you can just run the, um, run the executable and that is working as a standalone. So that is really good. And a big thank you to Raven Mad Hatter over on the GitHub. So he left the report about the export issue and provided several very, very helpful links that I was able to use to fix the problem. So I really appreciate that. And now for the stress test. So this is the old version, uh, the 1.2 version. And you can see that with the standard bake enabled, it was taking um, like 12 seconds 
like 11 and a half seconds to generate the human, so 11.443. Um, and then if you disabled the baking, So then it takes about nine seconds. And I'm not really even sure if baking makes it any better. Um, okay, so that was like eight seconds. Um, there you go. So this is without baking. Um, and it's still eight to 10 seconds per human. So obviously that was not fast enough. <laughs> so now this is the new version two that I've been working on. Um, you can set the bake parameter to true when you get the character body 3D. So with the baking, and that just combines the um, opaque and transparent textures into two single files um, and then combines all the meshes as well, which is supposed to be better for the graphics card, but like I said, I'm not even sure. Um, it seems like because the textures are shared, like the images, if you leave them unbaked, uh, it seems like it's actually faster. So here with the baked characters, you can see in the new version that it is taking four to five and a half seconds um, per human. And I do still have the compression running in the background as well, so you can look for that if you were curious. And now, if I change this to um, the bake parameter to false in the get character body 3D, um, now you can see that it's only taking like two and a half seconds per. And I am recording as well, so um, definitely a huge improvement. I'm very happy with the results. So you can see I've been letting it run for a while. I'm at 97 humans, and even with recording, um, I'm still at 60 FPS, so they can run around and of course, you'll want to give them their own AI. So this is best case scenario, but with 100 humans, unbaked, uh, we're at 60 FPS. So if we, um, I would like to discuss like if it's better to bake or not bake. So definitely leave comments uh, below, but there is a parameter so you can decide which uh, you want to use. So big thank you to Paul Hilton, Irie, John, MHS, Some Human, Terrence, Ryan, and Sean. Thank you so much for your contributions on Patreon. Y'all can check out the Rainbow Games uh, Patreon link in the description if you would like to help me continue making free and open source plugins. So there are still some known issues. Um, for example, if you enable the ragdoll, then uh, you can see the limbs work pretty well, but the head goes flying off. So, And I've tried with Jolt and with the default physics. So if you have any insight on that, please leave me a comment and let me know uh, why that might be happening. <laughs> Another thing is whenever it's running, it's throwing all of these um, node is not inside tree. So, and that's because I'm setting the global position on a node that hasn't been added yet, uh, would be seemingly the problem. But I was testing over here, and so the node A has not been added to the tree. Node B is a child of node A. So this is basically doing the same thing over here, uh, just simplified. But when you set the global position on node B, and then print out node uh, the, the relative position, you can see that it does take the parent node position into account and does not throw any errors. So I don't really understand uh, why... 
Uh, but it does spam the debugger, so... Um, and we have a reason to be using this global position here, as I showed you, it does work uh, with nodes that haven't been added yet, so... And I haven't really added any of the support for the other components in the humanizer class, so these are still exist in the authoring scene, um, but then the humanizer class itself, I haven't added all of those. So, um, basically just the main collider and the ragdoll has been added here. So I still have some work to do for sure. Um, like I said, if you want to do any pull requests to help um, get some of these things finished, that would be great. Um, I just wanted to get the version out. It's been a long time and I've got, you know, 95% of it done. So I just figured, I know there will be other issues that come up and there's of course many features that I want to add as well. So it's just a, uh, uh, just a process, but I think, I think it's a good time to go ahead and do the version two release. Just know that there will probably be additional changes. So. I appreciate all of y'all watching and um, keeping up with the project. Thank you so much and have a great day.